Hello and welcome to the Flying Reporter Aerodrome Review. Today we're visiting Wolverhampton Hapney Green Airfield in Staffordshire. Hapney Green Airfield is located near the village of Bobbington, seven miles southwest of Wolverhampton. Unusually for UK airfields, it has three hard runways. The main runway is runway 16 and 34, the others are oriented 2204 and 2810. There is a short grass strip, 2810 as well. They prefer visitors to arrive using the standard overhead join and all fixed wing circuits are left hand at 1000 feet QFE. But because of helicopters in the right hand circuit, fixed wing aircraft descending from the overhead should not descend below 1300 feet QFE on the dead side. On the day I flew in, runway 34 was in use. Some of the taxiways are a little undulating, so the airfield recommends pilots taxi slowly. Parking will usually be near the tower, either on the grass to the west of the tower or on the asphalt apron. Hapney Green Airfield opened in 1941. It was built for the RAF and they used to fly Blackburn Bothers and Avro Ansons from here. Today, Hapney Green is a fully licensed civilian airfield, but most of the World War II buildings are still intact. The tower building, for example, is the original from the 1940s. Former locker rooms, maintenance sheds, parachute packing rooms, and a building that once was a standby morgue still exist. It's what gives the place its ambience. Go to a lot of former World War II airfields in the UK and you won't find many original features. What's more, the place is apparently haunted. They hold paranormal evenings here sometimes, and there have been reports of things going bump in the night. More than 70 privately owned aircraft are based here now. Many are sheltered in the original 1940s Bellman hangars. These hangars were temporary and transportable structures built for speed, but they're still standing strong today. Now, RAF Hapney Green used to be called RAF Bobbington after the local village. It was used to train navigators and observers. And that's interesting for the reason why the name got changed, because those observant navigators, word has it, ended up sending pilots instead of here to an airfield that was 100 miles southeast of here, RAF Bovingdon. You can see the problem. The two names sounded very similar, and that's why. It's called Hapney Green Airfield today. Hapney Green is a busy training airfield. It has five fixed wing flying schools and schools for microlight and helicopter pilots. The airfield is also a regular stop off for visiting students doing their qualifying cross country exercises as well. So do listen out for the student call sign if you're visiting and give them a bit of space in the circuit. The airfield cafe is situated right underneath the control tower here. And I'm told that's really unusual, possibly unique in the UK. And another peculiarity of that is that non-pilot members of the public who want to come and visit the cafe, they have to cross this live taxiway here. And some might think that would be a recipe for disaster, but it's been approved by the CAA because they've got these special non-standard markings, signs, and an audible warning for people about to cross. The cafe sells a fairly wide selection of food and portions are generous. There's the usual snacks, baps, cakes, ciabattas, toasties, wraps, a kids menu and an all day breakfast. Okay, it's not fine dining, but it'll certainly fill you up. You can eat inside, on a balcony on the tower or down in a large picnic area at ground level. Just be aware that access to the cafe is via a narrow staircase and those with mobility issues may find it a bit of a struggle. To pay your landing fees, you have two options. You can either go up to the tower and pay the FISO or their assistant, or use the Aero PS app, which the aerodrome is registered with. There's no pilot briefing room as such, but I'm told there's free Wi-Fi at the cafe and while the pilots are there checking their NOTAMs and the weather, their passengers really must go and check out a rather quirky attraction. 
Now you don't see this very often at airfields, do you? An antique and vintage centre. Hmm, let's go and take a look. It's like a TARDIS inside, a treasure trove of curiosities. Room after room, corridors, and yet more corridors of things from yesteryear. No space is wasted. You could quite easily get a little lost in here if you're not careful. Apparently people come from miles to visit, and if you have time to spare, it's a fun place to explore. Just make sure if you buy anything, you have room in the aircraft to take it home with you. If you intend to leave the airfield, it can be a little tricky getting taxis at certain times of the day, particularly around school opening and closing times. The airfield can help you with bookings in advance though, and that would be wise. Unfortunately, the airfield isn't served by public transport. If you need an overnight stay, the airfield recommends this inn and pub in the neighbouring village Bobbington. It's about a mile away from the airfield. You probably need a lift or a taxi to get there. Ooh, this is nice. So, I'm staying at the Red Lion pub in Bobbington, which is just about a mile away from the aerodrome. I have to say, I normally stay at chain hotels because you kind of know what you're getting with them. And I traditionally steered away from kind of smaller establishments, B&Bs, pubs, that kind of thing. But the aerodrome recommended this place and uh, actually it's really nice, really nice. I was staying in the executive room, a little bit more expensive than the standard rooms, but there's loads of space it's a bit like a mini suite, really. Ooh. Well, I'm going to definitely be using that later. A nice walk-in shower. Very nice. Room for two in there. Maybe even three. Just in case my husband is watching, I didn't share my shower with anyone else. Nor the jacuzzi bath, as it goes. It was a nice way to relax, though, on my own after a hard day of filming and flying. The place is very modern, staff are welcoming and the food high quality. If you're planning on staying here during the week, though, a word of caution, you'll probably have to book because the rooms are apparently very popular with golfing parties. So back to the airfield, and if you need to refuel for your journey back home, Avgas, UL91 and Jet A1 are usually all available. Well, I'm about to jump back into India Victor and head on to Red Hill again. So that concludes my aerodrome review of Wolverhampton Hapney Green. The one thing that stands out about this aerodrome is that they're friendly. They're true GA. Their heart is in it. The management love the place, love the vibe, and so that's really comforting to see in this world of business-driven general aviation. So I'm grateful for uh, the aerodrome here, for having me here. As I say, they're welcoming to both home base pilots and visitors alike, so do pay them a visit. Uh, if you would like me, if you're an aerodrome operator, would like me to come and visit your aerodrome and do a review, then do get in touch.